at least one person, the Vietnamese person in their lifetime, they will wear a, a British shoes. Oh, so um, every person in, in Vietnam, Vietnam where they, in their lifetime, they will have a one pair of British shoes. How oh, interesting. Yes. So it's brand loyalty. Yeah. Oh. Brand love. Brand love. Yes. <laughs> No stranger to the manufacturing industry, Cindy Wu of BTS helms this more than 40-year footwear producer based in Vietnam. Now a native of Ho Chi Minh City, Cindy is inspired to be involved in this highly competitive industry where Vietnam is ranked as the second largest footwear manufacturer in the world. A chemical engineering graduate from the University of Toronto, Cindy, who was named Outstanding Leaders in Asia at the ACES Awards, acknowledges that although a formal education provided a solid foundation to her career, she learned more by just doing as she likes. Her business, which she considers an endless adventure. While growing up, her parents served as her role models continuously importing the values of passion and dedication to serving community and society. Through their lives, she learned the importance of hard work, courage, commitment and perseverance. My generation is the third generation in the shoe business. So it starts with my uh, grand grandfather from my mother's side. He started uh, doing some sandal back in 1960s in Vietnam. Yeah, and that kind, those kinds of rubber sandal, and then we have the walk uh, cam, and then he stopped doing that, mm -hmm. and then it started again in 1982 with my mom, uh, my parents. Uh, so basically, I'm a third generation of shoemaker, and the second generation of the BT's company. Yeah, it's a family business. However, the question remains as to whether Cindy is passionate about the business that she was born into. I know about shoes like when I was so, so young mm. and later on I just figured out that um, it's really my passion because for this um, kind of business, first you be able to create a very good quality and beautiful product and the second is that you be able to serve customer which also I think is one of my mission as well, to serve others, to um, bring happiness and well-being to others. And the third is um, actually be able to provide job for a lot, a lot of people. There are currently some 8,000 people working at BT's, making it a mission for the company to provide a happy and effective working environment. This, according to Cindy, is what drives her to work. I call myself as an ambassador of happiness and well-being, really uh, to promote that, because I, I think all of us, we have the, mis the, the one of the goal in life is to uh, achieve a happy life. Why not at the workplace, we, we work together to create that vision together. Bittis has long been regarded as the national brand of footwear by several Vietnamese generations due to its long-standing market presence and strong branding locally. Over the years, BTS has differentiated themselves from other brands by catering to an entire generation of customers, ranging from quality products that cradle the first steps of a child to comfortable and stylish shoes that accompany young people in all adventures, from fashionable selections to diversified products for various market needs. However, one cannot discount the fact that the footwear business is highly competitive. So how does BTS emerge a leader and remain one in this industry? I think we just have to innovate, innovate and innovate. Um, it's a very competitive um, um, business and of course like we neighbor of China, which is the largest shoe producer in the world. So uh, a lot of Chinese uh, small factory, they, um, they sell the product to Vietnam and we're facing the, the com competition from China, and then also we 
face competitions in Vietnam as well, be, because Vietnam is also the sec second largest footwear producer. And then we have foreign brands, like big brands like Nike, Adidas, and Skechers, they came to Vietnam as well. So it's highly diversified um, market and very competitive. So that's why we have to really try our best in, in, in the way that we run business. What would be the winning factor? I mean, when you say it's competition, and I understand that, um, what would be the winning factor to stable all those competition? Yeah, would it be the design or the innovation, the creation? Um, as I reflect now, 42 years already we're in the business, and I think the love of the Vietnamese people for our brand is uh, one of the, the strong points. And also the second is that uh, we have a very good quality but affordable price for the Vietnamese. So uh, these two points are really, I think, make the success of the company because we have to win the people heart first. Cindy also said the success of the business was due to their marketing campaigns which captured the hearts of the people. She cited an example of a successful commercial on national television, which was conducted by the company in the year 2000, connecting Vietnam's history to BTs. And back in 2016, uh, 17, we launched another uh, very successful uh, marketing campaign that really relevant to the young people. So that's why over these 42 years, we have stayed firm in something the Vietnamese feel people and they uh, and, and we, we, we win their heart. Being in the business for 20 years, Cindy shares her ups and downs. Uh, the up period is uh, when I when we launched a very successful marketing campaign for our new sneaker line, uh, BT's Hunter. And at that time, we be able to uh, work with um, top artists in Vietnam, Sung Tung MTB and Subin Hoang Sung, and that create a huge success for the company at the time when we launched that campaign. What year was it? 2017. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's quite recent, but at that time, like, on the press, just oh. just impressed with our marketing campaign and contact a lot, and all of the shoes in our store is sold out, you know, and people really uh, um, like, on the store, packed with people <laughs> going to get their shoes. Whilst her setback was during the COVID-19 pandemic, when the challenge was to be able to retain and maintain her people while only operating 30% of their manufacturing. Uh, our goal is to keep everybody. Oh. Yes, and uh, our way out is we communicate with them. This is the challenge we face. So if we want to retain all of the workers, so we have to um, reduce the salary to the very basic so we can sustain uh, through that period of four months. This decision was embraced with support from her team, leading to the company not having to lay off anyone. Cindy regards her leadership skill as one which is inclusive, drawing on a happiness project which she introduced among the employees. I launched a, a happiness project in our, in our company. Mm -hmm. And uh, through that project is that um, we, for the, each of our employees, we train them about the happiness skills uh, based on three connections. One is connection to self, the other connection to others through deep listening, and the third is connecting to nature and we train our people on that skill and we practice together. The company also uses the Gross National Happiness, GNH, from Bhutan to govern the business with the people's happiness being measured each year in order for them to improve and practice happiness skills. And up to now is six years already mm -hmm. and we also see a lot of uh, result, good result out of that. Our, um, our community uh, more united, more connections, and also more productive. One of the most significant milestones for Bitties was in 2022, when the current set of employees were retained 
during the pandemic were able to meet the market's demand post-pandemic, while other companies were scurrying to hire and rehire during that period. And while financial performance is an important benchmark to measure a leader's success, Cindy says it is knowing that her people are happy and healthy working at Bitties that makes her believe that this is the result of good leadership. Does this mean leadership has changed through the years at Bitties? It's quite changed a lot. Yeah. When I look at my dad, his um, yeah. uh, leadership style more authoritative. Mm. Yes, uh, but now it's more uh, democratic. Like I will ask the opinion of my colleagues uh, when we try to solve one problem. Uh, at BTS, we always create an environment where each of the um, the team member they can share what they think, and and then together we facilitate and then we can have the group decision. Especially for the younger generation where it's important to explain why something should be done rather than the boss telling them to do it. It's important to listen to the voice of uh, the colleagues and the people around me or also listen to the, the customer to be in their shoes to understand what are the needs, what are the challenges they are, they have and then how together um, we, we can serve for that need. So it's really um, to be in the shoes of the other, to, to understand what are the needs arrive. Yeah. How interesting, you're in the shoe business. Yes, I'm in the shoe business, so <laughs> compassion is very important. <laughs> her leadership style is one of compassion, one who loves being with her team, working with them and knowing their capabilities inside and out. And based on their success, it is clear that her employees buy into her dream of always seeking to be the best version of themselves. I'm Anne Edwards for ACES.